Okay. Hi, I'm Pascal Serraars from Passive VR and in this video I'm going to show you how to use networking, Unity Network in combination with Instant VR Edge. The Edge version has, uh, apart from other features, built-in networking support for Unity Networking and for Photon Networking. And in this video I'm going to show you the basics for Unity uh, Networking. Photon will be uh, discussed in a different uh, video. So in this, uh, to show you how to do networking, I'm using a virtual machine. So this is my, what you're looking at right now is my normal computer. And next to that, I have a second virtual machine, which also uses Unity uh, as the other client in the network. So basically I'm now having two computers in the same network, which are connected to each other. So what we want to achieve now is that uh, on both computers there will be an, a separate avatar and that the avatars will be able to see each other. So how do we do that? Well we start with the, 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 the basic grocery store demo which is in, uh, available in all instant VR um, packages. And in this case I'm going to uh, rebuild it or change it in order to support multi uh, multiplayer. So in a normal uh, grocery store demo you already have a default avatar in this uh, scene. But now I'm going to remove that because for networking we need to instantiate the avatars dynamically during runtime. And in, in order to do that we're going to use some components which are standard in Unity 3D. Um, so for that purpose I'm going to add a new uh, empty game object and I'm calling that networking and to that game object I'm going to add the standard unity script which is called networking manager network manager hut and basically it all adds everything needed to start up networking so when I press play now it will start uh, a networking setup and I will be able to start a host, a client or a server. I'm going to show that later on. But what we want to achieve now is that the avatar is actually spawned at the beginning of, uh, of the, the scene. In that, for, for that purpose, the networking manager script has uh, an, uh, a parameter which says player prefab. And now we are going to fill the, fill the player prefab with an avatar which is spawned at the start. Uh, display prefab cannot be just an ordinary uh, avatar uh, like we have in the uh, standard grocery store scene, but we have in Instant VR Edge we have uh, an additional prefab category called networking, and it call, uh, contains a special networking prefab, which is called VR Unit of Unity Networking. And this prefab already has the required network identity, which is required by Unity Networking. And it has a script which does some special things. And the most important things you, have, you should know is that actually it contains references to two avatars. The first person avatar and the third person avatar. And in this case, the first person avatar is the one we are familiar with. It, it's actually the exact same prefab as we're using in Instant VR Advanced or normal non-multiplayer uh, environments. So you can yeah, choose besides the normal VR default avatar, you can also use uh, a Leap variant or Leap Connect, whichever one you would like to have. So, but if we go back to the networking avatar, you will also see the, th also see the third person. Uh, avatar and the third person avatar is a bit special because that is actually the avatar the people will see when you're looking at you from a different computer so let's put them next to each other so here we have the first person avatar and then the third person is here and one of the differences you already see of course is that the third person uh, avatar has a hat Normally I don't use a head in the first person because you cannot see your own head. But when someone else is looking at you, you should have a head. 
So in this case you can have different avatars for third person and first person and you can play around with that. Another important difference between the two uh, avatars is that the first person avatar has the required scripts for uh, inputting uh, Rift or Vive or consumer version for Rift or Hydra, whatever you require. All these scripts should be placed on the first person avatar because the first person is actually local. That's you. The third person avatar does not have any scripts for um, for uh, for driving the body movements because that's all done here uh, from the network. It's just copying the, the 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 movements from the first person avatar. So you can see it has the basic instant VR script and it has the body movements but no additional scripts for input tracking. So we remove these from the scene, go back to the networking of uh, prefab. So the first person we have seen and the third person which is actually the one other people are going to use. So this networking prefab is now going to be used in our networking manager script. So the player prefab we saw earlier is now filled with the networking prefab. And basically that's all you need to do. Because now when I press play, uh, okay we still have to use uh, an option for starting up. I'm going to use a host which is basically a server and a client uh, together. We all always need one server and every other client is connecting to that server. And a host is combining a server and a client. So the client is basically what you're seeing and the server will make sure that all the communication will, is going to, through other uh, clients. So basically now we have a single player modus of instant VR. However, it's networking enabled. So if we leave this like that at the moment, now we can go to the other computer and actually I'm going to set it up exactly the same as the first. So I'm going to use the instant VR demo grocery store. The basic demo is nothing changed from that. And what I'm going to do is remove the default avatar. I'm create a new empty game object. Rename it to networking. Add the same network network manager HUD and the player prefab again will be set to the networking prefab. So we have the prefabs, networking and this one should not be there. The MH VR make human MH make human VR unit prefab. So this is going there. So now I have the same setup on both computers and I can press play on this one and it gives, us, it gives the same situation as the first one. So now again I will start on my main computer. I start the host and it's doing the thing again and I go to the other computer, the virtual PC and now I'm going to use the client because this client is going to connect to my host server and I need to enter the IP address of my server. I don't know really actually what the, the error message is about. It doesn't say anything, so we'll check that later. But now I start a LAN client. And you already see that actually there are now two avatars visible. The first one on the server, and you see on my real, real computer it doesn't have the head and the other one can actually see your head. It's using the third person avatar. And now I can use my keyboard to move around the other avatar. And actually you can also see the avatar in the, uh, the headset. So you can see that 
it's very basic and very easy to set up a multiplayer uh, situation using instant VR ads. Uh, we can move on from this, but this, this is basically the, the basics and you can do anything you want uh, like grabbing objects, throwing them around and everything will be synchronized between, uh, between the clients. So you basically already have your social environment in which you can meet each other and do, uh, do interesting things. So if you want to have a, clear, a quick setup of multiplayer virtual reality, instant VR edge will be your mate. So thank you for this, uh, watching this video. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to, qu uh, uh, to contact me. Uh, I will be happy to help you further. Okay, bye.